Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to continue considering the subject of AC theory and we're going to build on the information that we've looked at in previous videos. The key point to this video is we're going to hopefully figure out just what impedance is and where it comes from. We're already familiar with the idea of an opposition to current flow. We know that that can come in the form of resistance in a resistive circuit or it can come in other forms as well. We saw in a previous video that opposition to current flow in a circuit can also come from inductive reactants and capacitive reactants. And that's what you get when inductors and capacitors are connected to AC supplies. What we haven't mentioned so far is where impedance comes from and what impedance is. Well, first of all, it's important to know that impedance is just another form of opposition to current flow. And like all the other oppositions to current flow, it's measured in ohms. But how does this subject of oppositions to current flow all of a sudden tie in with the information that we've been looking at in the previous series of videos? If you remember, we drew this circuit diagram to represent pretty much what's going on inside a fluorescent light fitting. We measured voltages from that. We produced a phasor diagram. And then from that, we extracted this right angle triangle that related to the sides of this uh, right angle triangle that you can see buried in the phasor diagram. So why all of a sudden are we now starting to talk about oppositions to current flow? Well, all will become clear. Let's first of all just have a little think about this triangle here. We saw that this was comprised of the voltages that we measured inside our fluorescent lighting circuit. What we're going to do now is we're going to adjust this triangle, not in terms of its proportions, but in terms of its dimensions. Now at this point, we're not gonna to worry too much about what the actual numbers are. We'll look at how we can calculate impedances and reactances for inductive loads and capacitive loads in future videos. But what we're gonna see here is an important relationship. So let's just look at this first of all. Let's just have a think about what we can do with this triangle. Now, each side of this triangle represents a different voltage within our fluorescent light circuit. This represents the voltage across the resistive part of the load. This represents the voltage across the inductive part of the load. And this, this side here represents the total voltage that's being applied to the circuit. Now, what if we take a voltage and we divide it by the constant current that is flowing through this circuit. What happens when you do voltage divided by current? Well, hopefully your mind is busy scrambling through Ohm's law and trying to transpose the formula. But what we find is that if we transpose Ohm's law to calculate V divided by I, all that's left for that to be equal to is the resistance of the circuit. So V divided by I is equal to the resistance. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each side of this triangle, we're going to take this whole triangle, and we are going to divide it by the constant current that is flowing through the circuit. So let's think about that logically. If I do this, if I divide each side by the same number, I'm going to end up with a triangle that has the same proportions but it will be physically smaller in size. Now we're not gonna worry about drawing this one to scale, but let's get our next triangle drawn up. So I'm just gonna pop this one down here, below here, I need to leave myself some space because there is another triangle about to appear. So let's try and get this as straight as possible and draw my right angle triangle right there. And then just finish it off around the corner there. Okay, so there's our right angled triangle. Now, the key thing that we need to understand at this stage, and this won't become important why this is so important until a little bit further down the line, but if we look here, this angle is still the same. Now that is really, really important. So that angle is the same as that angle, which is the same as this angle, which is the angle between the current flowing into the circuit and the voltage applied to the circuit. It will become a little bit more apparent as time goes on exactly why that is so important. But let's just turn our attention back to this triangle for a moment. Here we've got VR. Now that is the voltage that we measured across the resistive part of our fluorescent light circuit.
So if we take the voltage and we divide it by the current flowing through that load, it will tell us what value of resistance that that part of the load has. So in other words, if we do V divided by I for this side of the triangle, we find the resistance of the resistive part of the circuit. So you can see here that that will tell us what value that resistor has. What about though if we take this side of the triangle, the inductive voltage, the voltage across the inductor. If we divide that by the current flowing through it, what's that going to give us? Well, V divided by I still gives us a form of opposition to current flow. But in this instance, the opposition to current flow is not the resistance of the circuit, it is the inductive reactance of the circuit. Now again, if any of these terms are unfamiliar to you, please go back and watch previous videos in this series that cover things like inductive reactants. So if we take this voltage and divide it by the current flowing through the circuit, it will tell us what the inductive reactance is. An inductive reactance, we know the symbol is XL. So that's X with a little L in the subscript there, and that is equal to the inductive reactance. So there we've got inductive reactants. So now we know how much opposition to current flow is being formed by the choke inside our fluorescent light fitting. So that brings us on to an interesting question here. In previous videos we've spoken about other forms of opposition to current flow. We spoke about resistance, we spoke about inductive reactants, we spoke about capacitive reactants. So this side of the triangle tells us what the total voltage being applied to the circuit is. Now, if we take the total voltage that's being applied to the circuit and divide it by the current that's flowing into the circuit, what do you think that's going to give us? Now, at this point, a lot of my learners will say capacitive reactance because it's the only type of opposition to current flow that we've not mentioned so far, but there's no capacitor in the circuit, so it can't be capacitive reactance. And what it actually is, what it turns out to be, is that this long side becomes the total opposition to current flow in the circuit. So just as this is the total voltage, if we divide that by the current, we get the total opposition to current flow inside a circuit. And the total opposition to current flow inside a circuit we call impedance. So here we've got the long side of this triangle represents the impedance of the circuit. And hopefully you already know which letter of the alphabet we use to represent impedance we use a capital Z. So Z is equal to impedance. Now hopefully you've already heard this word impedance before. Let's just break it down a little bit. Impedance, it is something that is trying to impede something else. If you try and impede something, it means you try and hold it back, you try and stop it from making progress. Very much similar to the word resist. If you try and resist something, you try and hold it back, you try and stop it from moving forwards. So likewise, impedance just means another type of opposition to current flow, but it means the total opposition to current flow in an AC circuit. And you may well have heard this word impedance when we talk about electrical testing on site, when we talk about earth fault loop impedance, and when we talk about the maximum earth fault loop impedance. And of course, we know that those things can be represented with a Z. We have ZE external earth fault loop impedance, ZS, total earth fault loop impedance. So we can start to see how this applies to our electrical installation work. Now hopefully we can start to understand what impedance is in a little bit more detail, because if you think about earth fault loop impedance, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the path that electricity will take under earth fault conditions. We know that the electricity flows down the, uh, the CPC through the earth conductor and then down to the transformer, wherever that may be. And then it flows through the transformer that's feeding your property. It might be feeding several properties if it's a domestic installation or maybe just one property if it's a large installation. And then the current has to flow through the coil. So there is a coil in the transformer which introduces inductive reactants into the circuit and then the current has to flow back down the line conductor to complete the circuit. So we can see that we're talking about impedance in a circuit, the total opposition to current flow, because we don't just have the resistance of the conductors to worry about, we've also got to think about the inductive reactants created by the transformer coil.
So we're starting to understand now in a little bit more depth how this applies to our electrical installation work. Now, just as we saw before, uh, there is also a relationship between these sides of the triangle, and it's very similar to what we looked at in the previous video. We need Pythagoras in order to understand this. What I'm going to do, first of all, is just draw a line under that so we understand that we're looking at a new formula here. So we can see from here we've got Z is the hypotenuse, the long side of the triangle, and we can see that if this holds true from a previous video, we know that Z squared must be equal to r squared plus xl squared and therefore if we're interested in z by itself we will say that z is equal to the square root of r squared plus xl squared so let's think about that all important exam question if you're in an exam situation you might be asked the question what is the value of impedance of a coil if its resistance is say three ohms and its inductive reactance is 4 ohms. So these are just numbers that I'm making up off the top of my head here. And if we perform this calculation, what is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared? Well actually 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, and then if we square root 25 we find that the impedance of that uh, coil that I've just given you a quick example of will become 5 ohms. And therefore that would be the answer to that question. So we're starting to build up a real kind of large uh, repertoire of formulas and calculations that we need to be able to remember. The key one to take away from this is that Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus XL squared. Hopefully from this video, we've gained a little bit deeper understanding of what impedance means and also how important that is to us as electricians, both in our practical work and also when we're trying to learn about electrical science and pass our exams. In the next video, we're going to see how much more information we can get from this. We're going to continue this process along and we're going to have a look at what happens now when we think about multiplying by the current. So we'll get to that in the next video. For this video, all that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching.